Oh, so now we'll continue. This will be another part, the second continuance of the more expanded part of the Tanakh uh, teaching, the teaching on the Tanakh. And why we say that we should not call it the Tanakh. We could prefer to call it the Balui Kidan or the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and the Hadith Kidan. The New Covenant is also the what's called the apocryphal books. But this is the breakdown. Tanakh is acronym T N K A. So T Torah, Torah or the Ori, the five books of Moses, the N for the Nabim or the prophetical book, and the K H for the Ketubim. The Ketubim. Now, in Joshua 12.21, Joshua 12.21, and this occurs seven times in Scripture, this particular phrase in this spelling, T-A-A-N-A-C-H. And in the older Jewish or Hebraic uh, sense, instead of the K-H, it would be a C-H sound. So the K-H also can be a C-H sound. Now, Bamarinya, we say ta na the ta na Now, this is from, this is from Joshua, right? Joshua 12, and uh, I think it's 21, 12, 21. Um, we have Joshua 12, 21. Now, in Joshua 12, 21, it was a city of the Canaanites. It was allotted to the Israelitish tribe or the half tribe of Manasseh in Judges 1 and 27. Now, we also compared with this, in order to get into the real understanding of this, Matthew. We went to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Matthew chapter 7. So, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to roughly about verse 29. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29 is, it breaks down the two, there are two foundations. Two foundations. Right? The two foundations. There is one the the rock right versus the sand or the sandy the sandy that is building on the rock or is building on the sand now what we're seeking to demonstrate in this particular lecture is that the Tanakh based on the principles of, of Rastafari revelation and overstanding refers to this Canaanitish city this Canaanitish city the Ta'inak but what about this Ta'inak? What does the Metaphysical Bible um, Dictionary teach us about this, and what can we learn about this metaphysically? Now, according to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, it says right here that metaphysically, the seemingly deep and strong establishment of error in the life forces, deep, hard to pass, battlements shut up, is a city of the Canaanites of the lowlanders, of the Canaanites, the merchants, you know what I'm saying, the Canaanites, we could say the slave traffickers, is all linked with the Canaanites representing the elemental life forces of man under sense domination. Under sense domination, that means they're dominated by sense. You know what I'm saying, what can be felt, touched by the by the temporal senses, or what the cover in the guess now is a very good reference for us, because the Kibber and the Gas is our, is our Talmud. You see, the, the Kibber and the Gas is the teachings, is the teachings of His Majesty, is our Talmud as Ethiopian Hebrews. Now, in the Kibber and the Gas, it points out there are the so-called foolish Jews. You understand, the foolish Jews, and this is not to be just construed in a, a racial way. Many of our ethnic, the ones of our of our color, but not our spiritual kind, are likened to the foolish, the foolish Jews, or the foolish Judeans, the foolish Judahites. You know, now, the Kibber Neges, it points out many facts and factors of the foolish 
Jews, what it refers to as the foolish Jews. Now, who are the wise Jews of the Ethiopian Hebrews? The wise Jews of the Ethiopian Hebrews and the foolish Jews are those who reject the stone, that stone which the builders, the masons, the freemasons, the cryptic so-called Jews reject that building stone of his imperial majesty. They reject, and let's bring this forward, they reject his imperial majesty. You see, this is the stone which the builders refuse. He is the stone which the builders refuse and the stone which the builders have, 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 have rejected. Let's put this right here. He is the stone which the builders have refused and he is the stone which the builders have rejected. So those who are Jewish or Hebrew who reject the king of kings also is part of that foolish, that foolish um, Jews. You understand the foolish Jews. Now, metaphysically, Tanakh, it says here, in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. Now, Megiddo also links very curiously and very interestingly Megiddo also links with what we know as Armageddon, what we call Armageddon. So there's an Armageddon link in this too. Remember, Revelation says the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not for the synagogue of Satan. Now, like we said once again, this is not just a racial point. It's a metaphysical point. This is not a racial... Yes, there are racial reflections of this, of course. But moreover, if you want to understand this from the wise senses or the spiritual sense, we have to get into the teaching, we have to get to the metaphysics, and this is where we're going with this particular lesson on Tanakh, right? Now, this verse here, in Tanakh, by the waters of Megiddo, it says that Sisera was overthrown and the river Kishon swept away by his host, according to Judges 5, verses 19 to 21. The, quote, waters of Megiddo, what do they signify? They signify a place of cleansing, and thus we have the Armageddon, the so-called Armageddon, the gathering. You understand the gathering of the nations at Armageddon. Now, how is that linked with Tanakh? How is that linked to the Ta'inakh? How is that linked to the so-called Jews or what the Kibbutz Neges calls the foolish Jews, you understand, as opposed to the wise Jews or the wise Hebrews of the King of Kings and his Christ. Well, the link is right here it's in the teaching. Let's continue. It says that the, these waters of Megiddo, or Megiddo, it signify a place of cleansing, a great washing away of error by denial. And there's a reference to see Megiddo. So the next thing that we, we need to check out is Megiddo or Megiddo. Thus, the unreality of error is revealed and is put away, that which is the sandy or the sandy soil, the sandy soil. Now, Christ used these parables, these proverbs, these similes, these um, uh, verbal mythologies, in a sense, to explain great and deep teachings to us. This is why when Christ says, that therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, but then in Luke it says, whosoever comes to me, hears the saying, and do and does them. So we have to come to him, and he says, come to me, all ye that what labor and are heavy laden, and I will do what? And I will give you rest. But now when we come to him, it's not just to come to him, and, and that's it, but we have to hear these sayings. We have to hear. You understand? Know and, and the word here in the Hebrew is very significant. This is the Shema, the Shema, the Shema. And within our first publication, or at least book one, some have ordered it, and, and we look for a, 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 not a response, but we, we are looking forward to um, uh, get a, 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 a reply, not a reply, but a response from those who have ordered it, and, and where has it, was it helpful, and also where it might not have been helpful, you understand, in order to really teach um, the gospel of his majesty, this particular document right here, which is the book one, which is the book one of the gospel of his imperial majesty. In this particular 
book, we touch on the Shema, on the Shema, and, 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 and seek to at least um, give one a basic overview to the importance of the, of the Shema, of the Shema. That's the, first, that's the first word one might say, the first word in the creed, the creed of the once lost but now found Beta Israel, the, the Shema. So please make a note of the Shema. The Shema is very, very important. The Shema O Yisrael. Let's get the page right here. We call it the, the opening of the mouth. We speak as a first principle, even the first opening of the mouth, the very Shema, Simma, or Simma'a, in the Ge'ez Ethiopic. And the Shema, or the Simma, is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Christ also spoke the Shema, describing it as the first and the greatest commandment, or the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. That's the first and the greatest commandment is to hear. Hear both with your physical, but moreover with your spiritual ear. So Christ says to us, he who does what? He who hears these sayings of mine. He who hears the teachings or the testimony of the Christ. And we're saying according to the B-I-B-L-E. Let every man be a liar but Christ true. According to the Bible. You understand? According to the Bible, we hear the words of Yehoshua HaMoshiach, of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this day revealed to us in the person of Edomawi Hala Selassie or Rastafari and Rastafari revelation. So he says, whosoever what hears these sayings of mine, John says, whosoever shall come to me, you understand, to come to I and hear these sayings of mine and does them, and does them, he likens to a what? A wise you understand? Know he likens to a wise, a wise man. He who what hears these sayings of mine and doeth them. But the first prerequisite is come to me. This is where Luke's Wengel or gospel is very accurate. You understand? Know it's very accurate and very much on point, right, for us. Now, let's continue right here with the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary as we go into the Ta'inach which is the overstanding of the Tanakh, you understand, which the Jews who call themselves Jews hold to in this acronistic sense, T for Torah, N for Nabim or Navim, and K for Ketubim or the Ketubim, right? And it says that thus the unreality of error is revealed and is put away. So when the unreality or, or the false things that we have been led to believe, you understand, are revealed, which is the unreality of error, they must be put away. They must be put away by who? By us. You understand? So we have heard about the whitewash, so-called Jesus, blonde hair, blue eyes, and a lot of the racist and erroneous and, and demonic things that they have tried to teach us. Well, we now learn from prayer and study of the Bible, when we learn that these things are false and erroneous, what do we have to do? We have to put these things, we have to put these things away. Put them out of consciousness. This is the spiritual work that we, that we must do, each of us individually, so that we can come together as that corporate body of the Moshiach, of our, the corporate body of our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshiach. So, everyone who heareth these words of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man. So, all those who hear these sayings of Yehoshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, and, and doesn't do what? Doesn't do them. He is likened to what? A, what? a foolish, a foolish man who built his house upon sand, who built his house upon the Ta'inak. You understand? And what's, it's like building your house just on the Old Testament and denying Yehoshua HaMoshiach of the New Testament, but denying his teachings. 
You know what I'm saying? His teachings, even above and beyond just the racial complexion, though that's very important, because he who denies that Yehoshua came in the flesh, he who denies that he is a black man is a liar. You know what I'm saying? But not to hear the... See, if you're going to hear the teachings and truly spiritually hear the teachings, it will be no problem to accept Yehoshua HaMoshiach, you understand, in his, in his true racial his true racial identity. You know what I'm saying? There will be no problem of accepting our black Lord and Savior Yehoshua HaMoshiach as a black man with woolly hair. And then that leads one to the fullness of Rastafari revelation. Without the foundation in hearing the sayings of Yehoshua, the son, one would not understand the fatherhood of God revealed in his imperial and through his imperial majesty, which is the revelation for this present time. So here we learn the difference between the wise built on the foundation of rock, the foolish on the foundation of Sand. So everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, Yehoshua says, and doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand, said Jesus, said our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMoshiach. Such a house is sure to fall in times of proving. So to all those even our own black Jews and Hebrews that just are like Old Testament only, one has to understand that the true foundation of this is our black Lord and Savior without hearing his, his, his sayings, hearing these sayings of Yehoshua HaMoshiach, hearing these sayings of our black Lord and Savior are crucial, are essential, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. So such a house that is not founded on that truth, that rock, is sure to fall in times of proving. And in these times of tribulation, global tribulation, we're going to see these fallings because it is not built on a rock. So to anak means the sandy soil. And it's interesting that of all the acronyms or all the ways of of, of summarizing these books, that it will be choose by the other Jews, the OJs, to choose Tanakh. And then as we study the scripture, we come up to Ta'inak. And Ta'inak, in its metaphysical understanding, it reveals to us the two foundations spoken to us by our Lord and Savior. Now notice, notice the interconnectedness. Joshua 12 and 21 first reference to the Tanakh or the Ta'inak. Is a city of the Canaanites, the lowlanders, the merchants, by extension the slave drivers, and even by extension the European Jews who were involved in the slave trade, you understand, who hold to this, religiously speaking, as the Tanakh. So we have Joshua here. Now we have the New Testament Joshua, Yehoshua, Matthew 7, 24 to 29, who spoke to us of the two foundations. One foundation upon the sand. The sand, the sandy soil is related to the Ta'inak. The other foundation is related to the rock or to Yehoshua. So there are two foundations in Judaism. There's one that says that Judaism is a white Jew thing. And that's the sandy. That's, that's a shifting sand. But there's a true rock which says it goes back to the foundation of those rock-hewn churches in Ethiopia and has been revealed to us in these present times, in the person of, and to the person of his imperial majesty, the stone which the builders refuse, which has become the head of the corner, Christ in his kingly character. Now, all error is unreal. All that which is erroneous essentially is not real. You know what I'm saying? Essentially unreal and will pass away ultimately. Ultimately, it will pass away since it is not of the manifest, since it is not of the spirit. And this is why we're living in such times of change, because these erroneous ways of thinking, these make-believes that many had believed to be the truth, 
You understand know that our Lord and Savior was blonde hair, blue eye, was a white man, nothing good, came from Africa. We had no spirituality, religion, no connection with the Bible. All of those are unreal. But they built a whole society on that unreality. So why it seems as everything it seems to be crumbling in various ways is because of these times of testing, these times of proving, or what the Bible calls these days of tribulation. Now, in the study of Tanakh, there is one other reference to Tanakh that we have, and this is called the Tanakh Shiloh. Now, what is the Tanakh Shiloh? Let's come forward and discuss the Tanakh Shiloh with you. What is the Tanakh Shiloh, brothers and sisters? The Tanakh Shiloh, we find the Tanakh Shiloh is the approach to Shiloh, the threshold of Shiloh, or the pass. There's a pass to Shiloh. You understand? Know it's going past these things. It's like going through this, this sandy, this shifting soil to get to Shiloh. Well, who is Shiloh? Shiloh may be defined. Some say, well, Shiloh is Christ. Shiloh was a holy place. But it was a place mentioned as being one on the border of Ephraim. So it was on the border of Ephraim in Palestine, the border of Ephraim or the Afar land in Palestine. Now, metaphysically, Shiloh signifies the acquisition of peace of mind. When we acquire, as his Imperial Majesty teaches us, when we acquire that absolute inner peace, so necessary to our well-being, when we acquire that absolute inner peace, we now acquire that prerequisite peace of mind. You understand that prerequisite peace of mind that the teachings of His Majesty, the teachings of Kedemawi Hala Selassie the First, teach us about in the testimony of our and through the testimony of our Black Lord and Savior Yahushua Ha Moshiach. So the Father and Son is revealed and is manifest in and through even these things to us in these days and time for for a witness for a witness now now let us continue when it says to us that Shiloh signifies the acquisition of peace of mind by entering into the what the consciousness of Christ's presence that means one is conscious of the presence of the Spirit of Christ within the innermost of the inner being through the confirmation of the Word, through, through the confirmation of faith, through the confirmation of doing as well. See, the, see, the doing is the key. You understand? Firstly, is to come to Him. It says, he says, to come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. His Imperial Majesty asks the question, who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? Who? Only a fool would resist an invitation such as this that is so full of compassion. So Shiloh signifies that acquisition of peace of mind by entering into the consciousness of Christ's presence, of Christ's presence within one within one, words, Christ, in words, being born, or rather formed, in the words, in them. The Tanakh Shiloh now, which is the approach to Shiloh, or the threshold of Shiloh, or that pass, that, that pass to Shiloh, it signifies a state of thought. There's a state of thought that's entering into this peace. It's a state of consciousness or thinking that is entering into this peace, or that is at least, at least it's on the way to the peace that Shiloh represents. So that's what the Ta'enak Shiloh means, which is another reference to Ta'enak or Tanakh that we have in the scriptures. So the Ta'enak Shiloh, 
would be this present, we could say this present ministry of the King of Kings in his Christ that is at that threshold and, and is on that way because the Old Testament is a foundation for us. Make no mistake about it. The Old Testament is the foundation. But it's not complete outside of or apart from the testimony of our Lord and Savior. Because Revelation says this, those who overcome, they keep the commandments of God, right? And the testimony of our Lord and Savior, of our Lord, Gittachin Adonai Yehoshua HaMoshiach. So, my brothers and sisters, we do not like to use the reference of Tanakh, and if we do, we overstand both in the way that they tell us, but then we also overstand the real meaning of that is the sandy ground. This is why when the Bible says that some in their reading of Old Testament, this is what's very interesting, that some in their reading of Old Testament still have a veil over their eyes. They still cannot see Christ. They cannot see Christ, in other words, in his kingly character. They are still blinded to the truth, to Rastafari revelation. Let us minister to them where possible, and let us pray for them, my brothers and sisters. More to come, Yah willing. Shalom, Aras Tetharit.